Hello everyone, this is 24th January 2013 uh, and uh, today I want to discuss this uh, Justice J.S. Verma Penal Committee report which they submitted today to the government on this uh, Delhi gang rape case. Uh, and uh, many people were disappointed with this committee's report. The newspapers are saying that the recommendation fell short of matching people's demand for capital sentence to those found guilty in the rarest of rare cases of crimes. So what I want to do today is I just want to you know, give you my brief commands and uh, analysis based on legal theory that how these recommendations are actually uh, in contradictions with the legal theory, especially the libertarian legal theory, which is the most uh, just and efficient uh, legal theory out there, you know, with many other existing, uh, I won't call them even legal theories, they are just uh, kind of uh, assert assertions, right? Uh, they don't have any logical basis actually. Uh, I don't have any you know, time right now to discuss in detail what this libertarian punishment theory and what libertarian legal theory is, but it is based on um, uh, the fundamental principle of private property rights and non-aggression principle. But in any case, uh, let us just try and see what kind of recommendation this uh, J.S. Verma panel committee is uh, making to the government for amending the present criminal laws for tackling cases like the, the Delhi gang rape case, you know, which is making a lot of uh, uh, steer into the Indian society because uh, these rape cases are taking place since quite long time, since you know, since the ancient time actually, if you see, and uh, nothing has been happening, and everybody is demanding justice from the state. And in the beginning itself, I said that those people who are expecting any kind of justice from the state are going to be disappointed simply because the state is itself the most unjust institution in the whole history of you know, humankind. You will never find any such institution which is more unjust than the state itself. So you cannot expect any kind of justice from, the, from unjust people. But in any case, you know, uh, let us see what these recommendations are. First of all, uh, uh, this you know panel they they decline that uh, there are going to be any kind of capital punishment for this rapist. Uh, they say that uh, decline to recommend that penalty for rapist, saying existing laws were enough to deal with such offenses, but said amendments were. Needed and what these existing existing laws are. So they are they are proposing that uh, for rapists, you know, and if the victim is dying, even in that case, right, when they are committing when they are committing murder, uh, they will be imprisoned, imprisoned for uh, at least twenty years, and in in some cases, in some extreme cases, up to the lifetime. That means the natural life cycle of the rapist. But you know, you have, we have to understand that imprisoning somebody is not going to give justice to the victim, victim girl. Uh, a judiciary's main objective and a main function is production of justice. Their, their, uh, their objective and their goal can never be anything else than dispensing justice to the victims of the crime. But in this case, nobody is interested in justice and they are saying that we are not going to give them capital punishment, we are just going to imprison them and in that case what is going to happen is uh, when these people are imprisoned, when these six rapists and other people, other criminals are imprisoned, ultimately the cost of imprisoning them you know, uh, falls on the taxpayers you know, uh, who are not at all involved into these cases, you know, they are completely outside. Uh, the you know ambit of these cases, they are they are no part of this you know whole uh, criminal activity. But this you know the forgotten you know, person, this third third party taxpayers are always footing the bill of all these state activities. So, if, for example, I am the taxpayer, and even if I'm not involved into this case at all, I will be paying for this jail term of all these rapists. So these people are going to remain alive even after killing that girl and they are going to just enjoy their life inside the 
jail and uh, maybe 20 years or maybe less than 20 years we don't know right now but they will be alive right and not only that justice uh, verma panel committee is also saying that any kind of medical castration is also not uh, not in accordance with the human right of the criminals you know let's see what let's hear you know let's see what they're saying uh, stressing on the ill medical effects of chemical castration the committee said it would be unconstitutional and inconsistent with basic human rights human rights treaties for the state to expose any citizen without their consent to potentially dangerous medical side effects chemical castration fails to treat the social foundations foundation of rape which is about power and sexual deviant sexual deviant behavior we therefore hold that mandatory chemical castration as a punishment contradicts human rights standards now we have to understand over here is that the moment this you know this people uh, aggressively attacked this girl and killed her they lost all their human rights criminals don't have any kind of human rights so so talking about criminals rapist human right is absolutely preposterous and that is the biggest injustice uh, this panel is you know doing to the victim girl right as i said you you have to understand the legal theory first you know the recommendation which are coming they should have a sound you know a legal theory theoretical foundation but they don't have any kind of legal theory sound legal theory you know on basis of which they are recommending all these things they, they talk about human rights of criminals and rapists you know but they don't have any human rights because they already took away the human rights of their victim and once they do that they also immediately lose all of their human rights and in the beginning of this case itself you know i was saying that you know look people in the end these guys will come this lunatic people will come and tell us that we cannot punish this rapist because they are they also have human rights and we cannot violate their human rights hey what about the human rights of that girl you know who was you know killed by the six people nothing about that nobody's going to protect that girl's human rights right what about victims human rights and you know, nobody's talking about her human rights over here right but but as i say these people will not understand this you know and these are all retired justices retired judges but they don't understand the legal theory at all because and and whatever legal theory they are using is absolutely absurd and it's wrong right and not only that what they're doing is you know they are saying that uh uh and and what kind of uh, considerations you know they are keeping in mind what kind of you know reasons they are giving for not giving capital punishment right not hanging this rapist they are saying that and, uh, this is very revealing they are saying there is considerable evidence that the deterrent effect the deterrent effect of death penalty on serious crimes is actually a myth so so the reason why they are not giving them capital punishment is because it is not supposedly going to deter the crime or oh, since when the objective of any judiciary system is of deterring the crime <laughs> you know judiciary system's objective is not of deterring the crime their objective is to dispense and produce justice for the victim you know from where this deterring the crime comes into picture i just don't understand that everybody is talking about give very strict punishments so others will take example from that and others will stop you know creating all or, you know, or doing all this kind of criminal activities in the future but they don't understand that that can never be the prime objective of any judiciary system the prime and the only objective of any judiciary system should be producing justice for the victim you know if it is not going to deter the crime that just doesn't really matter what about the victims you know uh, uh, you know uh, human rights what about what about the retribution for the victim right whatever whatever they have lost because of this thing you know who is going to pay them back all this thing forget about deterring the crime and dispense justice but as i said because the state is the most unjust system in the world institution in the world they are never going to give any kind of justice to anyone they are not capable of doing that because they simply don't know about it all right what what else they are saying okay they say that uh, uh what kind of uh, what kind of help they are going to give to the girls you know what, how they are going to protect them they are saying that uh, give women the right to kill rapists as part of self defense uh uh and 
and uh, they are saying that uh, if they do that, giving the right of self-defense to women, the committee proposed that if a woman ends up killing a rapist or would-be rapist, she can uh, claim the right to self-defense under Section 100 of the IPC. Now, now uh, this is you know no recommendation. This is no any kind of amendment into the criminal law. Obviously, if you're going to kill somebody in self-defense, then you know, nobody can punish you because you are protecting yourself only. If that is not separate, you know, recommendation for there cannot be the separate recommendation for this Delhi gang gang rape case. That is that is the situation in most of this you know all of the self-defense cases, right? So, and I think the only lesson, you know, for example, if I if I'm a girl, then the only lesson I will get from this thing is that the system is not going to give me the justice. The only way in which you know I'm going to protect myself is killing the rapist on the spot, right? And they are saying that that will be okay if I think the girls should start doing that. They should start applying for girl licenses, you know, have guns. And when somebody aggressively, physically attack you, try to rape you, just, you know, kill them. That is how you're only going to get justice, you know, out of this system. Because otherwise, don't don't expect anything from, from the state judiciary system. Because the themselves are saying that the women will be protected only if they're going to kill kill their rapies on this spot, right? So, you know, that is the kind of lesson girls are going to, you know, have from this kind of recommendations. Well, I don't know. If I'm a girl, I'll take that kind of lesson only, right? That it's better that I kill my, I kill my rapies on the spot itself, you know, and forget about going to the court and wasting my resources, you know, and, uh, and, and expecting, judi you know, justice from the most unjust system. Anyways, you know, uh, as I said, they are not interested in giving, you know, hanging this, you know, uh, culprits, hanging this rapist, you know, they are just, you know, beating around the bush and not talking about the, you know, uh, real issues. They are saying that we will have to do something else to stop this kind of, you know, uh, rapes in future. Uh, instead of punishing them, they are, they are saying that they are, they are, you know, talking about something else. For example, uh, the report said the Delhi gang rape case shows the failure of traffic regulations, maintenance of law and order, and dealing of sexual assault cases. Well, who is doing all this? Who is in charge of all this thing? Who is managing all this traffic and everything? The government itself, right? So it is better that we should have private roads, right? And then no government roads, no public roads. You know, if you have private roads, then obviously the private companies will be very careful in allowing what kind of you know buses are running on their private roads you know they will be very careful that no such incidents take takes place right and take place into into their you know onto their roads and they'll be very careful but these are public roads so that's why people can do you know anything whatever they want to because nobody's there to stop them right but in any case what it has to do with the rape case and the justice right stopping uh, you know failure of traffic regulation etc et not only that they are also talking about uh, include sex education in syllabus uh, sex education must be made an integral part of school curriculum justice verma committee has suggested the committee's report said sex education should be delivered by well trained and competent teachers and must involve the participation of counselor who are trained in the field of child psychology Right, so you think that just uh, educating, you know, people regarding all these issues, sex education is just going to result in the lower rates? Is there any kind of empirical evidence for this kind of, you know, efforts? Judiciary system's job is to give justice and not to make this kind of recommendations, right? They can do that in, in, in their, you know, uh, in their private, you know, uh, roles, you know, as citizens, but not as justice, right? Not as justices and not as committee members. But in any case, they are, they are, as I said, beating around the bush and not talking about the main issues, right? You have to understand that no matter what you're going to do, this kind of cases will keep on happening. And... Instead of talking about deterring it or stopping it, we should be discussing how to punish the criminals and how to give retribution, you know, to how to give justice to the victims of all these crimes. Uh, but in any case, they are not interested, as I said. So, uh, uh, and government immediately said that after the committee report was, you know, submitted, they said that government assures swift action on Verma panel suggestions. 
Well, nothing is going to happen. The case is going to go on for a very long period of time. And I'm sure if they are going to incarcerate them, then the taxpayers are going to left behind with the bill. And very possible, very much possible that the victim girl's uh, parents, father or mother or any relatives, they are part of that taxpayers group, and they will be subsidizing the stay of all these rapists into the jail. Is that justice, right? No, that cannot be, you know, uh, justice. But as I said, this is all wrong with the whole judiciary system, state judiciary system that we are having. And as long as this same system is in place, no justice can come out of it. It cannot produce any justice. What, what we need is a private judiciary system, right, where private justices and private judges are dispensing justice and not thinking about deterring crime or sex education or traffic regulations. Now again, you know, I cannot discuss all this, how these private courts are going to function and how the private judges are going to produce uh, justice into this, you know, little video. Uh, but you can, you know, read, you know, work of libertarian scholar like Murray Rothbard and Hans Hermann Hoppe and Morris and Linda Ten Hills. You know, you can read books like Markets for Liberty, For a New Liberty etc. Uh, in which you know already all, a lot of theoretical work of how the system is going to work has been elaborated, analyzed very in a detailed way, right? For example, you can study, you can read book like uh, Brent Branson's uh, Enterprise uh, of Law, how private law system functions actually and how it dispenses justice. You know, it will take a lot of, you know, knowledge of legal theory to understand and solve this kind of issues and as long as the le legal theory underlying legal theory is muddled is confused I don't think so the system can produce any kind of justice so what we need to do is we need to just throw out this uh, state system state judiciary system if anybody wants to get justice or if anybody is interested in providing justice to the victim and victim's family now, as long as they are in that that system is in place, I don't think so. Justice can come out of it. All right, so uh, I think uh, I just want to uh, wrap it up today with this particular issue, which I want to discuss. I think uh, on weekend I'll come with other major news because uh, Finance Minister Chidambaram is uh, uh, thinking of uh, increasing tax rate on uh, the very rich people of India. They want to widen the tax base. And if they do that, then that will have uh, very kind of bad repercussions on the economy. Uh, so we need to keep an eye on this coming budget, right? Because it's, this is budget, you know, uh, season and on in March, you know, they will come out with uh, this year's budget. So I will analyze all those issues in future. But right now, I'm just reading you with my thoughts on this, you know, uh, uh, J.S. Verma panel committee's recommendation, unjust recommendations, because... I really think that if, if they are into private law system, this kind of justice and judges will immediately lose their business and lose their customers, right, for dispensing this kind of lunatic recommendations. But they can continue to, you know, uh, do their job, make their money from the government into this kind of state system only. All right, thank you very much for watching me today, and I'll be seeing you later on. Goodbye.